Okay, so this is a video on how to use GeoGebra to calculate different things for vector value function. Uh, let's just say that we wanted to try to set up GeoGebra to show us the tangent vector t of t for problem number 115. Uh, when you're on the GeoGebra homepage, you click on Start Calculator. And then in the top right here, click on the waffle and you want to go down to 3D Calculator. So our equation here for 115 is uh, we have a vector value function which has three components. 2e to the t is the x component. et cosine of t is the y component. And et sine of t is the z component. So I'm going to define the x component of that vector value function as being f of x. And so that's just going to be 2 times e. Instead of using a t, I'm going to use an x in this case. So I'm writing these three as functions of x. The y component, I'm going to call that g of x. So the y component is e to the t cosine t. So I'll type e to the x times cosine of x. And then the third component, I'm going to call that h of x. And then that's going to be e to the x times sine of x. So if you click on these colored circles next to the functions, just click on those circles and uh, that'll turn each of those three off. And while we're at it, let's turn off this gray plane for the XY plane. If you click on uh, the gear in the top right, show plane is checked. If you uncheck that, that just gets rid of that. Makes it look a little bit nicer. So we've created a uh, a function for the x component, a function for the y component, a function for the z component. So now we can bring all this together and create our vector value function. So we need to give the vector value function a name. In the problem, it calls this R of t. So I'm just going to call uh, our vector value function R of t. And the function within GeoGebra that we need to use is curve. So if you just type curve and then create a parentheses, we can now just place our vector value function inside of this curve parentheses. So the x component for our curve is going to be f, but we don't want to use x anymore. We want to use the parameter t. So, so all of the variables we use inside of this curve are going to be t's. The y component would be g of t, and then the z component is h of t. Uh, we also have to declare what variable we're using as the parameter here. And so we're using the parameter t, or the variable t, so we declare that there. And then we also have to give t an interval. And this is something that we might go back and change later. If you're given an interval in the problem, you would put the lower bound first, comma, the upper bound. And from problem to problem, you might have to change these numbers. You basically want these numbers to exist so that you can see the graph. And by entering negative 10 to 10, I can actually see the graph of this pretty well. Uh, I wouldn't enter a number that's too big. Like I wouldn't put a thousand if you only need to see up to 10, because then you might be making your computer work a little bit harder than it needs to. The, the reason why we place this together in sort of a modular way is it makes it easy to go back and change these functions if we want to. All right, so back to the problem. So this is asking us to find the the, uh, the tangent vector t. So in order to find the, the tangent vector t, the equation for that is r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. And we've already defined our function r here. So what we can do is we can build this in steps. The denominator for this, the magnitude of r prime of t, so I'm going to call that denominator uh, d of t. So the equation for the magnitude is it's going to be the square root. So I clicked in uh, I clicked in the keyboard in the bottom left, and then the square root key is right there. So I've got the square root. So the x component we already defined as being f of x. And then if you want to take the derivative of that, you can just put the prime symbol. So that would be f prime of t. And notice, as we're doing this, GeoGebra is calculating the value of all this uh, as we type it in. And then we need to square this. So that's the x component squared. So now we need to 
do the y component, which would be g prime of t squared, and then plus h prime of t squared. So if we drag this out to the right, we can see Jodra tells us what that denominator actually is. So I'm going to call the unit ten tangent vector capital T here. So I'm going to do capital T of little t. So if we tell Jodra to define this as a curve, then it will actually show us the equation of the unit tangent vector. We need to take the derivative of the x, y, and z components separately, and then each of those get divided by the magnitude. So the x component for this would be f prime of t, and then that would be that divided by the magnitude, which I've already defined as d of t. So then to do the y component, I'm going to put a comma, and so the y component would be g prime of t divided by the magnitude, which we already defined as d of t. And then I want to do the z component, so I'm going to put a comma, and then this would be h prime of t divided by the magnitude, which is d of t. So if you hit enter, it's going to say uh, legal number of arguments. So if you look at the bottom here, so we're doing 3D, so it wants expression, 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 which we have our three expressions. It wants the parameter variable, which in our case is going to be a t, and then you have to type in a start value and an end value. So I still need to define my variable t. And then I'm going to set this up the same way I set up t above, and that's going to go from negative 10 to 10. So now when you hit enter, it creates the equation for your unit tangent vector. So this would be the, the equation for the unit tangent vector. This is your x component, your y component, and your z component. So next week when we get into the normal vector and the binormal vectors, you could have GeoGebra calculate those for you in the same way that we just uh, calculated the tangent vector. So the way we define the unit tan tangent vector, this doesn't help us a lot on this graph. So I'm going to turn that off. What we want to do now is we want to actually show the unit tangent vector on the graph for whatever value of t we, uh, we want to choose. So this is going to be actually a vector. So type the word vector. And for vector, you can see that we have to give a starting point and an ending point. So this vector, we want, to, we want the starting point of this vector to be wherever we are on our curve. And our curve over here is the, is the vector value function r of t. So the starting point is going to be wherever we are on our function r of t. But since I want to create a slider, and I want to be able to animate this vector for different values along the function, I'm not going to use a t. I'm going to use a variable that I haven't used yet. Uh, we have not used a v yet, so I'm going to use a v here. So my beginning point is r of v, and then I have comma. And now I have to tell, uh, tell GeoGebra where to end this vector. Let's type in r of v again, and we're going to be adding to the r of v the unit tangent vector, which we already defined t of v. So now if I hit enter, it's going to create this slider for me. And so if we move the slider around, it's, you can see that on the right there, we, that we have that vector that's being moved around. That's being animated for us. So if you want your unit tangent vector to stand out a little bit more, you can change the color of it. So in order to do that, you want to go back down to where we created the unit, the, the vector. And if you click on these three dots here and then go to settings, if you go to color, you can change the color of that vector. So let's use a red to make it pop out a little bit better. So then if we close that out, our unit tangent vector is actually red now. So let's say that I want just to animate it, animate the unit tangent vector on this scale. If I drag the slider around, I can see where does the that vector actually leave the screen. It leaves the screen at uh, somewhere around 1.4. So I'm just going to say let's let's animate it all the way up until two. So I'm going to have the upper boundary for my parameter be 2. That's because anything beyond that is going to be off of this graph. Even though it's off the graph, 
JGebra is going to continue to process for everything off the graph, which is going to make everything run slower. So by limiting things that are going to be off the graph, and then we set an upper uh, and we set a bottom boundary of negative 10. Negative 10 is still on the graph, is just sort of wiggling around near the origin there. So I'm going to leave the negative 10 alone. So if we go back up to where R was defined, I'm going to change the upper boundary of that from 20 to 2. We also had the boundary typed in for the t here. So this is going to go from negative 10 up until 2. And then I also want to do it for the slider. So for the slider, if you click on this cell for the slider, click on the three dots and go to settings. If you go to the slider tab, you can change the min and max values for the slider. So I'm going to start it from negative 10 and the upper boundary would be 2. Also under the repeat here, change it from oscillating to increasing. That way you don't see the vector uh, going backwards and forwards. This way it just goes forwards only. So if you hit the play button for that slider, it's now animating the vector value function t of t. So that little red vector that's showing the change of the function everywhere along the curve. So the first two things we did in this module were arc length and curvature. And GeoGebra can actually calculate these for you. So in order to calculate the arc length, you want to type the word length with a capital L. And you can see that we have these different options here. Our arc length is a curve. We defined R of T as being a curve above. So this is what we want to do. We want to tell it what curve we're using and then the starting t-value and the ending t-value. So you could click on that one there and it'll just populate this to tell you what you have to type in. So first we have to tell it what our curve is. Well, well our curve which is, was just R of t. And now the starting and ending t-values. So if you were given different values of t, you could just enter those here. So let's just say if I wanted to find the arc length on this from t equals negative 10, all the way up until 2. I can type those in and hit enter. And then down here below, it calculates the arc length for that. And then the other thing that we've done recently is curvature. Inside of GeoGebra, if you just type the word curvature, or type part of it at least, you can see these two functions for curvature. We're using the first one here, curvature point object. So you have to tell it where on the curve you want to find the curvature. And the best way to do this is just to say, well, I'm going to find the curvature of R and then just feed it a t value. So if you want to do the find the curvature at t equals zero, you just type in R of zero. If you want it for t equals one, you just do R of one. And then the object over here, the object is the curve R of t. So if you hit enter, It'll just calculate the curvature of your vector value function at the given value 1. And it says that curvature at that point is 0 0.09. And we can actually change this. We can say the curvature at 2. And the curvature at 2 would be 0 0.03. And let's say we're moving on to problem 119. So problem 119 says given this vector value function, find the unit tangent vector t of t. And then the graph is shown here. Since I defined my x, y, and z components up top here as f of x, u of x, and h of x, I don't have to change anything else inside of this program except for those first three functions. So for this new problem, my x component is just t. So if I go in here, remember we're dealing with x's, so I'm just going to delete everything after f of x equals, and I'm just going to say that's just equal to x. And notice everything on the right here updates. So it, it recalculates everything that was typed in based upon that updated value for the x component. And now my y component for this new problem is t squared. So I'm going to erase all this and I'm just going to type in x squared. And then it updates everything that we did below with that new value for the y component. And then my z component is just a t. So I'm going to erase this, and then I just can type in an x. 
So there is my new x, y, and z components. Notice it changed the vector value function r. And so if I scroll down here to where I've defined my P curve, it's updated the X, Y, and Z components of the P. And another great thing about GeoGebra is now that you've typed all this up, you've done all this work to create this program, if you're signed in, you can go to the top right here and see these and see the symbol. If you click on that, you can actually save this. Let's just say we're going to save this as vector valued functions. And then you can just save this. So let's say if I log out of GeoGebra and I'm gone, close all these windows, and the next day you're at home on a different computer and you want to pick up where you left off, all you got to do is go back into the calculator. Go back to the calculator. You'd want to sign into your account. Click on the menu here. Go to open. And then you can just open up right where you left off. All that work is saved for you. And next week, when we get into the normal vector and binormal vectors, if I were you, I would just use all this stuff that you've already created and then just add more stuff at the end of it. That way, you'll have one GeoGebra program that will calculate the tangent vector and the curvature and the arc length and the normal vector and the binormal vector all together at once. And all you have to do for different problems is just change the X component, the Y component, and the Z components. And then also maybe play around with the, uh, the starting and ending points for T.